So in order to kick off, um, what are the main forms of social interaction that you envision for 2050? Uh, 2050 is a long way off, a really long way off. Uh, I guess that the, my first answer is pretty much the same ones we have now and always have, because the, the thing about social interaction is that it's us humans who do it, and we will carry on doing it however we can. I think, uh, I think people have a desire to communicate with one another as intimately as possible. And um, we've always had that desire. So I, I, don't, I don't think that's going to change. I think uh, social interaction will evolve and we will learn new ways of communicating with one another. But ultimately, we will have conversations, we will have exchanges, we will learn from one another just the way that we do today. I'm going to, right, so Neil Spohr, who's my favorite physicist, uh, once said, prediction is very difficult, especially when it's about the future, and, uh, and most particularly when it's about technology. Um, so I'll probably, well, I'm going to start from the other end, as I always do, uh, and start with people, because I don't think that technology drives social action or social behaviors. Um, it's rather the other way around. Uh, to be sure, behavior has changed once, once technology has been adopted, but, um, but it's not technology that makes people want to communicate. So, as I've said, uh, people want to communicate as intimately as possible, and, and technology provides a set of tools that enable us to do that, that, that enable us to fulfill that desire. If you think about the, the evolution of technology of communication so far, we, we began with letters and face-to-face, -face, and letters became emails, and we had voice communication, we had telephones, telephones became mobile. Now we have telephones that are mobile, telephones that are on our computers, and we have this thing that we're doing, you and I, right now, where we're actually seeing each other. It's not just voice, it's video as well. We've got that on our phones now as well, on our mobiles. And, um, and we've got, you know, Twitter, which is like sending a text message to the world, and we've got all different ways of messaging privately, and we've got these things now, like... Uh, uh, like Vine and um, and Instagram, where we're we're communicating with one another through images, through images that aren't me telling you something, images that are something I thought I thought was pretty that day, or something I thought was funny, and uh, and we're learning about each other in that way, and uh, which I find really interesting, fascinating, and nice. So I think that as technology evolves, one of the things that we can probably expect is that we will be able to communicate even more intimately, even more instantly than we were able to now. I mean, the, the, even in the next five years, uh, things like Google Glass are going to enable us to keep our heads up while we talk to people and, and not be inside the smartphone cocoons that we're in now. Um, I can imagine a future where I could share the whole stream of my life, the whole stream of being me, with someone that I love or want to give access to, God knows why they'd want to start life. But, you know, uh, I mean, back in the 90s, we in the Geek Squad had webcams, and we would just turn the, leave the webcam on when we were at our desks, and, you know, you could just watch somebody banging away at code all day, which, uh, which was also quite bizarre, but we did it then. And it, I can, this desire to interact, this desire to engage with each other, I think, I think we'll find ever more instantaneous and fluid ways of doing that. So again, I think, I think it's people who will drive the, the development of the technology, our desire to be as close to one another as possible. Um, and that will, that will be for both better and worse.